we are live for the first time from the Gurgut Kitchen. Uh, it's, it's a premiere of the live streaming. Um, let's start it out like we start every episode. Are you hungry? So this is a first for me. It can go very wrong or it can go okay. Um, we're cooking a very typical Swedish starter. It's a toast skagen. It was invented in, I don't know, in the 50s or 60s by a famous Swedish chef called um, Tore Vretman in a restaurant called Rich. And it's basically a mayonnaise shrimp salad. Well, that's the, that's the original version. That's mayonnaise mixed with shrimp. But I'm changing it a bit. I'm doing um, um, Vendee's roe in there. I'm putting some red onion in there, putting a bit of lemon juice in there, and we'll put some dill in there. Spicing it up with some white pepper and some salt. There's a couple of things we need to do. Um, and, but before we really start, please feel free to go ahead and comment. I have my computer in front of me so I can see when comment comes or questions come. Um, I'll, I'll make a quick break when a question comes up and, and I'll try to answer it quickly. Um, but let's have a look at what we have here on the board and I'll switch cameras for you. So we have, obviously, for the mayonnaise, we have our eggs, we have some vinegar and we have some oil and the salt. For the mix itself, except for the mayonnaise, we have some creme fraiche that makes it a bit lighter. The classical one is not with creme fraiche, but I think it makes it a bit lighter and it adds a bit of a sour note to it, which I find nice. So we'll do it with a bit of creme fraiche in there. Um, and obviously the shrimps, dill and the roe. For the bread, toast is just a it's just basically a toast fried in butter. And I use the shokopan, the Japanese milk bread, because I think it's, it's the best toast bread ever. But let's get ready. So before we do that, I'll clean up the board a bit. Put away the stuff that we don't need straight away. We'll start with the mayonnaise. This should be fine for the mayonnaise. We'll get a bowl. And first, obviously, with any mayonnaise, you need to separate the egg yolk out. It's normally a quick job. There's a couple of, way of ways of doing it. I've seen people doing it with an empty pet bottle and kind of sucking it into the bottle. But I do it the old school way because that usually works. So, we have our egg yolks, switch to the top camera. And now it's important that at the beginning, you don't put in too much oil. And just add little by little. And this is the only kind of, it's not difficult, but it can go wrong. And if it goes wrong, you have to start, start over. Well, this is looking like it will turn out okay. when you make mayonnaise you need a bit of a break for your arm because otherwise the sweat starts going but and an easy way when you do it yourself you kind of hold the bottle in one hand and hold the bowl the same and try to drip in little by little and as you go on you can put in more and more without the real risk of it splitting switch 
do the top camera again so you can see. You can see it's starting to get thick, but you want it quite thick because you're gonna put in some more liquid in it. You're gonna put in some vinegar and some lemon juice. And the mayonnaise kind of swallows more oil than you think. But it's a, it's a very important part of this dish and it's, it's well worth making it yourself. And as you can see, we are slowly getting there and I am slowly getting a bit sweaty. So we take the kitchen towel and we wipe the forehead. But we're almost there. Now towards the end, you can put in quite a lot of oil with no risk of it splitting. You can see the more oil you add, it's a bit counterintuitive maybe, but the thicker and firmer it gets. So you add liquid to something, but it actually gets firmer. And I'm using a neutral oil. So not like uh, olive oil that you only need for aioli. This is grapeseed oil, so there's no taste. Now we're almost there. We want it a little bit thicker. There you can already see, still a little bit, still a bit too liquidy. Now we're getting there. One last splash of oil. There we go. The only physically challenging part of this dish is done. Now we need a spoon so we can taste it. Uh, before we taste it, we add a bit of vinegar. Start with about a teaspoon, I would say. And we add a pinch of salt, good pinch. And you see adding the liquid kind of made it a bit runnier again. Now we'll give this a mm -hmm. it's starting. Put a little bit of lemon juice in there too. Always kind of squeeze it in your hand like that you manage to filter out if you have any pips or seeds. Give it another taste. Mm -hmm. A bit more salt. Just interrupt me if you have any questions. Mm. A last small squeeze of lemon juice.
So now we can put the vinegar away, leave the lemon and the salt. We get the creme fraiche and a spoon. I would say, what is this? This is two, two deciliters probably. It's 180 grams. Yeah, and I think we used about 140. Mix that in. Rinse the spoon off and give it another taste. See where we are. Mm. That's good. Perfect. We don't need any more creme fraiche. Now we can already put in the shrimps. We don't need a whisk anymore either. We can mix it with a spoon from now on. to the overhead camera. Now I'm Swedish, right? So I love seafood, what most Swedes do. And in Switzerland where I am, there's no way of getting a hold of fresh shrimp. So the second best is shrimp in brine. These are the hand peeled kind and they come in a, they come in a jar in brine. And the trick is to pour off the brine, shake them out on a paper towel and kind of dry them off. Do not rinse them. Because if you rinse these type of shrimps that have been in brine, they lose almost all of their taste. So these kind of shrimps are not ideal. Fresh is much better, but you take what you have. And they're not that bad. You just cannot compare them to fresh. Put in the roe as well. Mm, that's gonna be so good. It's a quite a liquid mix. Now we can put this in the fridge for a bit while we prepare the red onions and the, and the dill. So you cannot see with the fridge, it's because it's just out of camera, but believe me, it's there. It's warm with all these lights on. So, you can do red onions. This is a tropea onion, like Italian onion. It's red, but it's, uh, it's sweeter than the normal red onions. So we just peel this quickly. What I like to do, I'll, I'll show it from the top, because it's quicker to peel. I just cut into the first layer and then you can get a good hold of that. And then you just peel it off with your fingers. And it looks from the, from the shape, it looks more like a shallot, but it's, it's a very nice onion. Let's see, let's split it that way. And you want to chop this. You don't want to chop it too fine because you still kind of want to feel that it's onion in there. Let's get the dill out of the way a bit. And I would say this is the kind of the perfect size for it. I don't know if you realize, but I always keep the end on the onion. And the advantage of that is that it keeps together much better and you have something to hold on to. Mm. 
And one onion is enough for what we're doing today. So. I just sharpened my knife before, so it's nice to cut with. Perfect. And now, since they're gonna mix anyways, we might as well do the do the dill on the same board. I don't know if any of you have any questions so far of what we're doing. I'll take a little bit of dill off just to decorate later. And we're not going to need that much dill, but. I think this should do it. We'll get the shrimp mayonnaise mix out again. And we put our onions in. And we put our dill in. And we mix this. I'll get the chopping board out of the way so you can see better. Make sure just to mix it really well. that and now what we have left is to kind of season it and then obviously fry the toast and you need to have butter fried toast don't put it in a toaster it just gets dry it gets as crunchy but it just gets dry you need a butter for this dish let's get a spoon so we can try this Very good. It needs a little bit more lemon. Like that. A bit of white pepper. I didn't count the turns, but I would guess 10 of them. Mix it up again. Have a quick taste. Mm. That's perfect. Now, what's left for us? is to turn on the pan. I already put butter in it so that we don't lose any time. Now we slice up the wonderful sugar pan. A nice thick slice. Since I'm alone, I only need one slice. I normally cook for the family, but the family is already in bed, so they will get to enjoy the skagen. This itself is called skagen röra, so the skagen mix. And when you serve it on bread, it's called to skagen. And it's something where, if you have been to Sweden or if you are Swedish, you will, well, if you're Swedish and you've been to Sweden, you, you know that this is basically, it's available as a starter on most menus. <laughs> but 
the, 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 the backside of that coin is that a lot of places don't make it very good. But there's some places that make it amazing. A lot of the times for me, it's a bit too heavy, so too much mayonnaise. And that's why I mix in a bit of creme fraiche in mine. Um, and I, I, I really love the addition of the roe. I think it lifts the dish nicely. And the tropea onion is great as well. It has a bit of a sweetness to it that, that really comes, comes across well. So the butter is melting. We're almost ready. We'll get a plate out for afterwards so we can serve it up nicely. And since this is an old school dish, let's see if we can make some old school decoration as well. Now this is something I haven't done in years, but let's see if we can get this to work. So I think we can put the bread in. And it's very simple. You slice a lemon like this, and then you cut into it and you just twist and you basically put it like that on top. So we'll do that once we have the toast ready. Our toast is in. You can press a little bit gently with your hand on it and turn it. And now you cannot press with your hand because you're going to burn yourself. So we use a wooden spatula and press down a bit. But it really do not toast it in a toaster. It needs to be butter fried. You need the kind of richness. And there we are. Now before we serve this, let's get rid of the sides. I'll switch camera so you see a bit better. And I already cut it in half. In our workplace a bit. And now we can scoop on this goodness. Try to get some of the liquid off it. It doesn't matter if it runs down the side a bit. These are the things that you can cut out when you, when you don't live stream, right? There we go. That one goes into my mouth. Clean up the board a bit. Plate a quick wipe where the sauce ended up. And now, <laughs> for the big finale, we put on our lemon and we put on our dill. And there we are. Put a little bit of salt on it as well. So that's my version of a Swedish toast skogen. Basically a shrimp salad with mixed mayonnaise and creme fraiche, some uh, tropea onions and dill, some roe and shrimps on a nice piece of toasted bread, well, butter fried bread. I'll get knife and fork and then we'll give it a try. Let's see if there's any comments yet. 
Oh, you're all very quiet. Mm. Mm. This is so good. Just reminds me of home. I have to say it's probably the most difficult thing to make in this outside of Sweden is getting the shrimp. But if you know a place where you can buy the shrimp in brine like that, go for it. It's there is a difference. But but when you're an expat you don't really care. It's it's good enough. Uh, it's very close to the to the fresh shrimps, especially like this. If you just take one of these shrimps and eat them like they are and compare that to a fresh shrimp, there's a big difference. But once you kind of mix it with the mayonnaise and everything else, the difference is, um, is minimal. So there it was, Arto Skagen. I hope you enjoyed it. I sure know I did. Uh, it was my first live stream. Leave me a comment below if I should do more. It's, um, it's quite easy with, with simpler dishes like this. They don't take a lot of time to cook, but I'm sure I can come up with some other dishes that we could live stream. But uh, thank you for joining me this evening. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you will make this. I'm sure if you do, you will enjoy it. If you haven't done so yet, you know, click the like, click subscribe, click the bell icon, all those things that you have to do when you like a channel. And do leave me a comment so that I know if I should continue with these live streams. But that's it for tonight. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.